Hello and thanks for joining us again for Behind the Stitch. My name is Damian Gomez. I'm the Marketing Director here at Amware USA. And in this episode, we're going to talk about ways to increase revenue in your uniform store. Welcome again to Behind the Stitch. Uh, you know, we went over a few things in the past episodes of our product line, trade shows, ways that we're trying to partner with our vendors. And this episode, we really wanted to concentrate on the uniform stores um, specifically. And ways that, uh, well actually, feedback that we've compiled from our sales reps. We asked them, what are some of the things that you noticed in the uniform stores that you feel contribute to an increase in, in their revenue sales? What are some of the things that you noticed that maybe they should improve on? We, we took a big list of all these uh, different uh, metrics and we made um, a pretty long list actually of, of things that uniform stores can be doing to help uh, promote or help generate a lot bigger revenue in their stores. And so what we're gonna do is just quickly go over um, 10 of the ones that I thought that were, maybe not the, well, they're very important. Um, I'm not gonna put them in order of like most important to least important or anything like that. This is just something that we, we threw together and um, each one resonates really strong uh, with myself and hopefully with you as well. Now, some of this stuff might seem to be, uh, you know, should I shouldn't, shouldn't have to say it, I shouldn't have to go over some of these things, but unfortunately, in our experience, we've we found that some uniform stores actually aren't practicing um, some of these some of these concepts to the fullest of their potential. And so if some of these items don't apply to you in your store, that's great. Uh, but if they do, maybe just a quick reminder on, on areas that you can brush up on uh, just to, to help you hit the goals that you're trying to hit. So first, let's start with the staff in your store. Excuse me. You know, when it comes to your clientele and who walks in that door, the staff of your uniform store should really know who your bread and butter departments are. They should know their spec. They should know, uh, you know, some important names. They should know ways to upsell some of these officers as, as they're coming in. They should be familiar with the items that they buy on contract or items that they uh, often complement their, their purchases with. Maybe there's a specific duty belt that they really like or maybe there's a, a specific um, you know, tie pin that, that these officers like to wear. Maybe it's footwear. Maybe it's uh, you know, PE um, gear whatever it is, your, your staff and sales team should know who the bread and butter of your uniform store is and should be able to cater to them um, at a pretty high level. They should know the products that they're in and they should know if, for example, an officer comes in and he's looking for a pair of pants and your uniform store doesn't have that particular pant in size, is there an alternative? Is there something that's also on an approved buy list that you do have that can be substituted for the pant that you're out of stock in. Things like that, because a lot of times officers will come in, they'll have a sheet, and they'll say, I need everything on this sheet, and they don't really want to deviate from that list because they don't know, the officers themselves don't know other options available. If there's another per if there's another pair of pant or another shirt that they can also purchase as a substitute that's also approved for that department. The sales team should know that. That way they can come in the store and they can say, hey, um, you know, uh, I need this, I need this uniform, here, here are the items I need. Your sales team can say, oh, you know what, we have this pant, we don't have this shirt. However, did you know that here's an alternative shirt and, you know, it's only a few bucks more, it could be a few bucks less, and the, you know, the, the officer is able to leave with that uniform right away or, or get fitted right away. You know, valuing our, our customers' time in, in the store is, is essential because these guys are really busy. We have to remind ourselves sometimes that you know, it's not always the funnest thing in the world to have to go to a uniform store and knock out this list. It, it's, it's an event. It's like shopping for kids' school supplies sometimes. You know, you have to go here, you have to go there. This, this store doesn't have it in stock, so they might have to go to a different store. Having your, your sales team and staff knowledgeable to what they can purchase can be crucial and it can lead to, to bigger sales for sure. Excuse me. Um, second thing I want to talk about is Google. So. If you do a Google search on your business, what comes up? Is it just the map location? Is it your Yelp reviews? What exactly is popping up on Google? And did you know that you can create a Google listing for your business? You can go to Google My Business 
and if you just do it a normal search like that, there's going to be an option for you to essentially take ownership of your business from within Google. And what's really cool is that it's kind of like its own social platform. Each Google listing has its set of reviews. There's photos that you can upload of your store. There's, um, if you have a promo going on, you could take a picture of that promo and then post it as a post on, on your Google um, My Business listing that'll show up. So when you have customers doing a, a search, whether it's to get a phone number to call your store or directions on how to get to your store, these images will pop up and it gives them a, a really good insight as to what you're offering. Um, maybe they'll see something in there that they didn't know that you offer that they'd be interested in buying. It's also a, a good way to out, basically outrank your competition. I bet you that if you do a comparison between your store and an, another local store, there's going to be a pretty big difference on where you guys are on the Google listing platform as far as uh, how many, um, let, me, let me back this up a little bit. So when you, when you create a Google listing for your store and you upload some content, whether it's a picture or a post or whatever it is you upload, you're going to get insights. You're going to get all these analytical uh, tools and metrics that you can uh, use to compare yourself to other stores in your area that are listed under the same category. So it'll give you a little bit of information on what your competition is doing as well and how you can better perform against that competitor. So to do yourself a huge favor and Google my business, that's what you're going to look up on, on the uh, Google search and create your Google business listing. When you do that, they will probably prompt you to verify your address to make sure that you're just not making up this, this random location. So be on the lookout for a postcard that they'll probably send you. It'll contain like a six digit code. Save that postcard because when you verify your address, you're gonna need that information to, uh, to go forward with the process. But definitely something you guys wanna check out. Third on my list is get social. So before you start making um, uh, opinions on social media and, and which one's better than the other, the idea is just to start. Just just get social and for right now I would say that Instagram is probably your 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 biggest um, whale that you want to start capitalizing on you can have somebody in the store if you yourself aren't familiar with with Instagram and social media I'm sure one of your your representatives uh, one of your customer service reps is ask them to do a quick hashtag search ask them to see what's trending in far as far as uniform news you know I, I understand that uniform stores isn't the most glamorous uh, thing to be looking up on Instagram, but what that means is it's actually really powerful. Since it is a, such a small niche, if you were to take that step forward and really try to separate yourselves from the competition using social media, it, it really wouldn't be that hard per se if you're consistent with it because you know, you'd be the only one using those hashtags. You'd be the only one in your area potentially trying to really dive deep into that social media arena, and you could take the market share. You can take a few pictures with some satisfied customers, maybe someone picking up a, a, a garment that they just had altered or tailored, someone that had a really good customer experience, have them take a picture with one of the reps if they're comfortable with it, and post it on your Instagram account and just say thank you for stopping by, we're glad that we were able to serve you, we hope you return again. You can hashtag their department, you can hashtag you know, excellent customer service, hashtag happy customer, hashtag sale, hashtag your uniform store, right? You can do a lot of different things and, and use uh, Instagram to start promoting your brand. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to develop and create a, a credibility for your uniform store, which is essential. A lot of officers in the law enforcement arena, they really aren't fond, in my experience, they're not really fond of uh, Facebook. Facebook provides a little bit too much information, too much data out there, and a lot of officers that, that I know of kind of want to stay off, off the grid, if you will. Um, but on Instagram, they, that's where they, they play. So um, Instagram is definitely something you want to look into. You'll also be able to do giveaways and launch promotions. There's different, there's different tools within Instagram alone that, that can help promote your store that'll increase revenue for sure. So have, when you have a chance, take a look at it. I, I highly recommend that. It's, it's a platform, really easy to use. You can do it from, you know, obviously from your phone and it, it's a good starting ground. Second, when we talk about, I'm sorry, this would be, uh, I guess, number four. So promotional offers in your store. Maybe you have an email campaign going on. Maybe you have in-store flyers that you're trying to pass out at the cash register. 
if you don't, maybe you should start. And when you do start, you kind of have to put yourself in the mindset of the customer themselves as far as where they walk. Every, every uh, uniform store has a, a, a glory path, if you will. And you can kind of see, if you study the flow of your customers within your store, you'll be able to notice certain patterns on, on how they walk in, do they go left, do they go right, what's, what's the big area of interest within your store, is there any destination spot within your store that they're kind of like hanging out in and just, you know, looking around. If you have a tailoring and alteration department as they're waiting for these alterations to be done, where are they sitting, where are they standing, what are they looking at? In these areas, that's, those are the places that you want to obviously call out your promotions. Have you ever thought maybe about using um, bathroom space? Maybe if you have a, a printed flyer, you can put these, these promotions in the bathroom, believe it or not, or in the dressing rooms. When they close the door, what are they staring at? Probably just a, a mirror and a bunch of blank walls with the, with the, the coat hanger, right? Use that area and, and put your promotions there. Or maybe in front of, as they get fitted in front of the mirrors, maybe eye level right next to the mirror that they're staring at themselves at when, when they're getting pinned for their alterations and uniform adjustments. Stuff like that. Um, you can also uh, use, you know, go, my favorite um, tip would be to visit your local 99 cent store. And in there, you're probably gonna find those large neon poster boards. For 99 cents you know if we go to Staples or we go to uh, Office Max or one of the bigger commercial office supply stores you know there's they're like two bucks three bucks a sheet but at the 99 cent store 99 cents you could probably also get some markers there find whoever has the best best handwriting within your store and have them do a quick sign you can cut it out put it on the slot wall make a big arrow out of it use these materials to call out the different promotions in your store as well you know, invest in some double-sided sticky tape. Just because you have the flyers out um, throughout the area in the store doesn't mean that the areas that are being promoted are, are getting enough attention too. So imagine if you will in your store, if you have different promotional offers plastered throughout your store, but on the actual fixtures themselves, there's nothing. It would be nice if you had the promotion being called out in the dressing room, right in the fitting room. And then when they walk out onto your sales floor, there's a little neon sign above one of those items that is on that promotion. It'll instantly, they'll, they'll, it'll catch their eye and it'll, it'll draw them to that, that item if they're looking to buy that, that product. Something to think about. When it comes to calling out attention, another thing uh, I wanna discuss is creating a clearance rack. We all have these areas in a uniform store where uh, maybe it's not the hottest moving item of your store and you've been struggling on ways to you know, move those items. Create a clearance rack. And what eventually is gonna happen is if you uh, put it in a high traffic area and it's, it's there and you have some signs calling out what the discount is or what the offer is, um, it, you will ultimately start generating sales. It'll give you a really strong uh, bump in getting rid of that items if they're all together. You know, if you have a certain pair of boots that isn't moving and you have a certain headgear or, or, or a hat that's not moving or you have a, you know, it, it's, it's winter and you have a bunch of shorts that you need to get rid of, get a little six foot table out like this one right here, put a tablecloth over it, buy yourself a little sign, um, even a little plexiglass, you know, go to your, your local office store supply, get a little eight and a half by 11 plexiglass stand, print something out on a piece of paper, put it up there and say, clearance table, clearance rack. You can hang a, 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 a stanchion sign or, or some, some graphics coming down from the ceiling if you want. Um, you know, call, bring, bring attention to that, to that clearance area and I guarantee you, uh, you, you'll be able to move through some of that product, especially if it's priced right. Uh, let's see, another thing on the list is say thank you. So we know that officers have one of the hardest jobs out there. These guys are constantly being videotaped. Uh, these officers are constantly being um, ridiculed. They're always, always under someone's watchful eye. And when they walk into the uniform store, sometimes they may not have had the best day. And if their attitude isn't the, what you were hoping for, 
you kind of have to take a step back and understand that maybe there's something going on um, behind the scenes that you know we just don't know about. We all have good days, we all have bad days. This could have been a really bad day for that officer. And so when they walk into your uniform store, the, the idea of your uniform store being there to serve them is really, really important and it's something that they really do appreciate. Whether or not you hear it, that's a different that's a different scenario. You know, a lot of these officers like to keep the comments to themselves, um, but I, I, I'm willing to bet that they really do appreciate it when excellent customer service is provided and when a special thank you is provided. So if it's within your budget, maybe in the morning you can offer them coffee. Uh, maybe once or maybe every other week, you know, you can have like a, a donut morning for these for some of these officers offer maybe there's a way that you can offer them some water a cold a glass of water on a hot day something small maybe for one of the larger departments that you're serving you can create a special plaque a special call out a special sign saying hey you know XPD um, thank you for your your loyalty um, we really value your your partnership with our, our store um, let us know how we can better serve you something small like that it will it'll it'll go a long way um, within that department itself, and I think that's very important. Clean the house. So, I've been into several uniform stores, and I somehow or another I find my way to that deep dark corner where all the 4X and 5X uniforms are just covered in dust. Uh, they're like on the bottom shelf, or maybe that they're really, really high nose bleach uh, shelf areas, and these uniforms are just really dusty. For the officers that use those items and that are going to purchase those items, it's kind of, um, it's, it's, I, don't, I don't want to say you know, gross, but it is what it is. When, when they pull it down and they're, they're getting ready to wear this uniform to look professional, the last thing they want to see is a big pile of dust all over their uniform. Do a little spring cleaning, try to rotate your stock around a little bit. It, 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 does, it, it is um, difficult at times, depending uh, in what facility you're at, to keep things anti-dust anti-dusty right um, but try to be a little bit diligent and making sure your, your items are clean you also might want to consider taking down some clutter if you have a lot of graphics or banners or stickers that have been up on your walls and stores for years maybe it's time for a refresh you know there's lots of creative ways that you can use the same items but maybe create a different uh, way in which they're presented you can make a mosaic you know you can actually cut some of these things up and reposition them maybe just on a single wall if you want. Um, a lot of vendors uh, and manufacturers like ourselves are consistently putting out newer banners, newer graphics, and so you know if you need to do away with the old to get the new, reach out to us and, and, and ask us, and I'll get into that a little bit more about that later. And when it comes to cleaning house, the bathrooms. If you have a bathroom that's used by not only uh, people that visit your store but the staff as well it wouldn't hurt to do like every two hours if someone could just quickly walk in there and just give a give it a quick a quick glance maybe pick up some of the paper towels that are on the floor maybe put in a glade plug-in or maybe a little spray, spray bottle something like that you know it's always um, nice to walk into a, a, a clean bathroom should you need to use it so that's another good thing and when it comes to uh, you know I mentioned the glade plug-in maybe adding one or two plugins throughout the store in different areas. You know, uh, when you walk into a footwear selection, you, when you're in a, in a, in a nice uh, store, at, like at, at the mall, a nice department store, you get that, that rich leathery smell, you know, when you, when you walk into that footwear area. What does it smell like in your footwear area? Does it smell like old socks? Does it smell like a bunch of plastic? Maybe consider putting in a, a plug-in of uh, like a, a vanilla sandalwood scent or, or something like that. Um, something, something pleasurable. And um, the uniform standard. So if your staff has a uniform code that they need to adhere to, please enforce it. So the idea is for everybody to look uniform, everybody to look consistent, to provide the same quality of customer service. A good way to start is if they all look the same. So if they're starting to get a little sloppy, if their shirts need to be tucked in, gently remind them to do so. If they have um, excessive body jewelry that needs to be removed and you've let it slide a few times, please you know, ask them to, to kindly remove it. Remind them of what policies you put in place when they accept it to be 
part of your organization and, and what kind of, um, what kind of uh, uh, um, appearance you want to leave your customers with? What kind of impression? That's the word I was looking for. What kind of impression do you want to leave your customers with when they walk in the store? Are they going to walk in and find a bunch of people that, that look like maybe they don't work here? Or do they want to walk into a store and, and, and say, ah, I know right away this person works here. They're, they're dressed in the appropriate way I know to go to that person for help. Something to consider. When it comes to asking for help, so this is something I talked about earlier as far as new banners in your store. So call your rep, right? Call, call your rep and ask for help. If the sales aren't where they, where they need to be, call your reps and ask them, hey, you know, last year we did this number, this year I would like to do this number, or you know, I'm, I'm doing much better than I was anticipating. I, I want to keep this this uh, this ball rolling. What can I do with you to hit the goals that that you're interested in hitting as a uniform store owner? Send some pics to the marketing team. You know, if you have a uniform store and you have a couple of blank walls lying around and you're interested in putting up some really cool graphics, give us a call. Send me a few pictures. Let me see what your store looks like. I can make a few suggestions. I'll have my graphics team put together a really nice mock-up scenario of what your uniform store could potentially look like if, if we work something out together. Ask us for new banners. Uh, you know, every every so often we, we do different runs, we do different production runs. One of the things that we do here at Tax Squad and United is that we try to create banners for the different niches that would be going to your uniform store. So we just don't do generic you know, Tax Squad banner, United Uniform Manufacturers banner. We have different niches within each brand uh, and create banners for each of those niches. So if there's a fire, if you're, if you're you know, only serving uh, people in corrections, we have correction banners. If we, if you have, other, you know, if you're in the security market, we have security banners. If you're in law enforcement, we have law enforcement banners. So something that complements your store a little bit more than just a generic branding of a logo, uh, we can provide that for you. So ask us, reach out to us and, and see you know, what we're able to do, how we're able to make your store pop a little bit, a little bit better. Another thing I'm gonna throw out there for you guys is a blog post. I know that managing a website, because I, I manage ours over here, is that it can be very time consuming. And if you don't have the, uh, you know, website uh, technical expertise to, to create blog, blog posts and stuff like that, you know, why not ask us? So what we can do is, um, as a thank you to you for partnering with us, I wouldn't mind giving you a shout out on our website. We can create a small article for your store, include some pictures, uh, directions, phone number, you know, and we can post it on our website on your behalf as a premier partner. You know, thank you for doing business with us and just another way for us to help get some attention to your, to your store and your website if you'd like. If we are attending a trade show and requesting maybe additional support. Sometimes we attend these certain trade shows and we're looking for one of our vendors to partner with. Respond to the email. You know, if we're gonna be in your area and we're gonna be uh, promoting or we're gonna be at a, a trade show that revolves around your niche, maybe you wanna stop in and, and say hi to some of the people that walk through that trade show floor. We understand that trade shows are very expensive. Um, you know, they range anywhere from maybe $350 for a table at a quick uh, demonstration up to five, six, seven thousand dollars for a booth. Average is about two thousand dollars for uh, a 10 by 10 area at most trade shows. And you know, it's a significant cost and when you factor in graphics, time, travel, um, a person to be there, that cost quickly goes up. But if we're already there and we're saying, hey, why don't you join us for a day and you know, bring a couple flyers and drive traffic to your store, that would be something that we'd be open to. So call the reps, again, call the reps and say, hey, I know XYZ show is coming into town. What do you guys have prepared? Is there a way I can and, you know, partner with you guys uh, to, to, to uh, move forward in that, in that show together? Let's talk about um, now maybe structuring some campaigns within your store. So you have the promotions on the walls now. You have the promotions in the bathrooms next to the footgear throughout your store. Are they timed appropriately? 
So for, you know, winter, are you doing an outerwear sale? In the summer and spring, are you doing bikes, uh, bike shorts and polos? You know, you want to structure your campaigns based around your previous year's sales history. And again, I know this seems kind of redundant and I know some of these things you're already on top of, but it's, it's just a uh, friendly reminder of ways to kind of uh, develop a, a consistent game plan to uh, be in line with optimal revenue uh, revenue stream, right? Review your order history. So maybe last year you got an order from a local department that you really weren't expecting and it was a nice order. And this is something that it's getting close to that time of the year again. Are they gonna order that same amount or not? Why not give them a call and say, hey, last year you ordered these many products from me for this, you know, and I and I wasn't prepared to have that in stock for you right away. Are we gonna go down that same road again this year? Maybe you might be able to work out a, a better deal with them to keep that that large buy coming in year after year after year if you if you reach out to them and, and work something out. And then it'll have that product really readily available on the shelf. So when those officers do come in for those fittings, when they do come in for those items, they're already there and they don't have to wait, you know, 60, 90 days or, or you know, heaven forbid, 120 days for, for products to come in. You'll already have them handy. Um, create packaging. So one idea that I thought was really great was, uh, and this falls under the, the seasonal campaigns, is maybe your uniform store caters to different agencies and departments that have a large uh, academy uh, uh, in, in that area, and they go to your store to get that monster list of everything that each cadet needs before graduation. Their class A, their their ties, their 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 shoes shined, uh, boots, you know, er everything that they would need. Maybe you have something packaged in place. Here's an idea. Maybe uh, you can anticipate that and have a mannequin in, in your store dressed in whatever it is that they're gonna buy with a big promo right in front of it saying, you know, getting ready to graduate, ask about our XYZ Academy School promo and have a, 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 that list, maybe maybe you can get a hold of that list. There's an idea, maybe you can get a hold of that list. If they don't have it, maybe they left it in the car or, or it's at home and they went to the uniform store and they don't have it, it'd be nice if you had it for them. So partner with that department and see if you can work out something like that. Uh, what else we have? Oh yeah, merch the front of your store. So again, I shouldn't have to say this, but socks shouldn't be over here with shoelaces over here and then footwear over here and then shoe shine uh, items over here. Make it convenient for your customers to buy everything conveniently. So put the socks next to the laces, next to the uh, Dr. Scholl's insoles, uh, next to the footwear. Complement that area with some, some uh, shoe shining and, and polishes and waxes and brushes and all, all, all that good stuff. Kind of get that get that dialed in. You'd be surprised how many uniform stores I walked into and it's kind of like thrown all over the place and it makes it hard for the officer. You know, it's like an Easter egg hunt, <laughs> you know? Um, I understand that you want people to go um, and, and, and walk the entire store. Maybe it'll prompt them to buy. I understand that train of thought as well. But for the most part, these guys are walking in there and they know exactly what they want. They know exactly what they're looking for. And it would mean a lot to them if it was just there all together ready for them to attack. So um, that's one thing you might want to do. Monitor the stacks. So there's not one uniform store that I've walked into that's nailed this and I, and I understand why, but uh, I think it'd be a good idea to monitor every now and then how the top shelf of your uniform stores are looking. What happens is Somebody will walk in, they'll take a shirt off the top rack, right? They'll unfold it, they'll take a look at it, and what do they do with it? Right, they just throw it right back on there, or maybe they'll do like a semi-fold or a double over, and they'll put it right back on top. The next officer that walks in that wants to look at that same shirt, what do you think he's gonna do? Is he gonna go for the shirt that's already unfolded, or is he gonna go for a new shirt and unfold that new shirt? That's right, he's gonna go for the new shirt and once again, open it up, take a look at it, do a double fold and then just throw it right back on. So now you got two shirts up there and it starts to drape over and you get like this um, dirty laundry 
pile mountain type of uh, structure going on, you want to monitor that. You want to you want to clean it up, and uh, you know get someone to kind of keep that mountain from growing too tall, too fast, too quick. Uh, ensure that the sizing is is visible on these gondolas. So. I know it, it can be frustrating. Not every manufacturer puts their uh, sizing in the same area on each garment, but if there was a way to maybe put it on the gondola insert on that end shelf as well, you know, get out a ruler, find out how big that gondola area is, go maybe an, inth, an eighth of an inch wider, print out something on a Word doc and create little, little uh, you know, you can put, get it on even on cardstock create little inserts with the sizing on there and snap them in place so these officers know exactly where to go, what to look for. Um, if you're using tiny little stickers, that's the stickers fall off. You know, stickers fall off all over the place or worse, what happens is we find a sticker on the floor, we pick it up, we see a garment that doesn't have a sticker and we just kind of slap it on there not really knowing that um, th on the other side there was a, another sticker with a different size that's the actual size. So if you have those gondolas lined up with some uh, with some inserts calling out the sizes and possibly the brand that would that would be uh, very helpful and it it prompt it's a it's a it's a faster transaction let's see what else do I have here um, you can create a niche display so just like we talked about the Academy um, display where you have a mannequin with the, the full uniform they can buy and maybe when it comes to footwear you can create a shoe shining uh, just a single little shoe shining display where you have a pair of of boots next to some polish next to uh, a brush you have the kiwi there or the angelus or the lincoln wax whatever it is that you're, you're you're selling have some type of little display set up so that it 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 teaches um, it informs it it reminds your customers what they're going to need to do to make that boot look that nice have it all together you um, also, another thing is if you have a lot of tchotchke items, if you have a lot of items that are, um, you know, accessories at their discretion and they're starting to pile up, move them to the front checkout counter and remind your staff to ask the, each customer that walks through the door if they'd be interested in purchasing it. And if, they, and if they're not moving, then once again, there's that clearance section that you can put, put these items on and maybe you can generate some sales that way. It's, it's very difficult when you have, um, when your uniform store is understaffed, which, which never happens, right? So, but when your uniform store is understaffed and it's crunch time and there's lots of customers in there, I, I understand that it's, it's frustrating and you're just kind of handling these orders expeditiously. You're trying to just get people in, get people out. Well, there are all your customers. You have all these customers in your store they're all looking to buy things. They're all there waiting for a reason. They're looking at your promos. They're looking at the clearance items. I mean, you gotta hit them. You gotta, you gotta strike when the iron's hot. And so take that extra second or two and ask them if they'd be interested in purchasing those small items. Ask them if they need a, a band, you know, um, a, a morning band for their badge. Ask them if they need another bar tie. Ask them if they need a, a paracord bracelet. Ask them if they're in the market for another knife that you have on sale. Ask them if they have the, you know, if they need looking for a pair of sunglasses or a replacement flashlight or batteries for their existing flashlight. Whatever it is that you have on your countertop or tchotchkes that aren't moving the way you want them to, you know, it they can be just overlooked. Ask your customers if they want them. I bet you a few of them are going to say yes. That would have never thought about getting it up until the time you asked. Let's see here. Um, oh, here's a good one. Fix the small stuff. So I'm sure we all can walk a uniform store and find very, very small things that could just use a five minute, little bit of attention to detail and fix it right up. For example, a wall socket that has a loose panel that just needs a quarter inch tightening to secure that loose switch to the wall. Uh, maybe it's a stain on the floor that you can just get a little some upholstery cleaner and sh give it a quick spray and scrub it and you know soak up the soak up the stain uh, maybe one of your closets or dressings room maybe the handle is loose take a screwdriver to it and, and tighten that up and when it comes to tools every uniform store I believe should have a small tool chest kit on hand 
take the time. This is this is crucial. Take the time, go to, to your local hardware store if you haven't already and purchase like a $30 tool set. Nothing extravagant, nothing crazy. Phillips flathead small socket set. Um, you know, some tape, you want zip ties, masking tape, uh, you're gonna want um, some, uh, maybe a, a couple tubes of epoxy, maybe some super glue, double-sided tape, uh, maybe some fishing fishing line, if you're gonna be hanging some things and you can use fishing line. Create a small toolkit because you know it just as well as I do, things just break. No one knows why, no one knows how, but they, they just do. Um, an, another uh, investment that you might want to consider doing, especially if you have a lot of things on the walls, is investing in a small drill set. You can go to any hardware store and you could probably pick up a nice, simple, easy, low dollar drill set for like 40 bucks. And uh, be sure you purchase some drywall screws and a set of anchors um, to just reinforce those walls. I've been into a few stores and, and I have to I'd be, I'd be honest here, the slat wall looks a little scary sometimes. You're not too sure. You can see it's been drilled into this drywall uh, probably with 100 screws, but it still looks like it's loose. It's probably because those, those screws are going right into the drywall. They're not going into any anchors behind that. And so, um, you know, you, you gotta be careful with stuff like that, especially when you're putting like a lot of heavy weighted items. Like if you got body armor on there, outerwear, it's a lot of weight on those, on those dry, on that drywall that's being, you know, supported by that slat wall or the grid wall, whatever it is you got there. You want to be careful so having a tool small tool set on hand to fix those minor repairs in the store really make a big big uh, improvement throughout the store they really do that's all I have for you so far today once again I apologize if uh, this show was um, not as useful as you as you'd like I'm hoping that it was it's just a quick reminder of things that uniform stores should consider um, to, to make uh, the customer experience um, a fluid, uh, a nice experience, something that they're gonna wanna remember and come back to. Also, a uh, quick tip, if you have a Google listing already, if you have something out on Yelp already, if you have a website where they're leaving comments, respond to the reviews. Good or bad, respond to each one. It gives you a chance to answer it and you know, customers are paying attention to what you're saying in response to these comments that people are leaving. It's very important. So that's the last bit of advice I have for you today. I hope this helped out. If it did, I'd appreciate a comment below. Let me know if there's anything I can do here uh, to help your uniform store meet your goals, reach that next level that you're trying to do. Call your local representative, ask them, you know, tell them, Damien said that X, Y, Z, what can we do about that? And I'll be more than happy to partner with you and meeting those goals. Thanks again for watching. My name is Damien Gomez. This is Behind the Stitch. You have a great day.